Hi, welcome to the first part of the Chapter 6 Microbial Growth Virtual Lecture. I'll introduce Chapter 6, and then in this part of the video, I will focus on some of the physical requirements for microbial growth. So in Chapter 6, these are the learning objectives. This is the part I'll focus on for the virtual lecture, listing the major physical and chemical requirements for microbial growth and a use for the four elements, or what kind of organic molecules these elements would be used for, what a microbial cell would use these, these major elements for, uh, for microbial growth. The rest of these objectives, um, oh, I'll also talk about this, defining obligate anaerobes, uh, obligate aerobes, facultative anaerobes, and obligate anaerobes. So we'll talk about what those terms mean and what that means for microbial growth. The rest we will talk about in, uh, in the next lecture. So let's talk about the re requirements for microbial growth. What do microbes need in order to grow and survive? There are two types of requirements. There are physical requirements. These are physical or environmental things. They need the right temperatures to grow. They need the right pH to be able to grow. And they need the right osmotic pressure in order to grow. There are also chemical requirements, certain elements that they need in the right amounts in order to be able to grow. Those are carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, and oxygen. So in the first video, I'll talk about the physical requirements, and then I'll review with some application questions, and then I'll have a separate video where I talk about the chemical requirements. So let's talk about physical requirements. The first major requirement is the right temperature. There are different groups of bacteria based on the temperatures at which they grow really well. If you see on the bottom here, these are temperatures. Notice this is in Celsius. So on the Celsius scale, zero is freezing, the freezing point of water, and 100 is the boiling point of water. The average body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius. So that's here in the middle. That's what our incubator in lab is, uh, is set at. <clears throat> A refrigerator would be down here at about four or five degrees Celsius, so it's just above um, the freezing temperature. So if we look at these different groups of bacteria, these are naturally occurring bacteria that you might find out in nature. There are some that exist at cold temperatures. Um, these would be found in places like the soil of a tundra or maybe really cold water. Um, from glaciers or deep ocean depths that are, that are just above freezing. Um, that would be these down here. So they do exist out in the environment, but they're kind of isolated to things that are these temperatures. If it gets warmer than these temperatures, they die. Why do they die? Because their enzymes function in this temperature range. If it gets too cold or too hot, the enzymes denature or fall apart. They can't do any chemical reactions and they die. Um, on the other end, we have organisms that can live in hot temperatures. So thermophiles, remember this is normal body temperature. So this would be pretty hot. This would be um, like a hot bath type of temperature. So these are also, although they are the fastest growing group, when they're at their optimum temperature, these are the fastest growing. There's not a lot of places on Earth where they'd be found. These would be places like um, certain hot springs or, um, you know, maybe right around things like geysers or hot water vents. I mean, these there's not a lot of places in nature that are that much warmer than a mammal's body temperature. Most things are cooler than a mammal, a warm-blooded body temperature. And then over here, we have even hotter organisms. These are the hyperthermophiles. So these are, you know, near boiling or sometimes above boiling temperature. Now you might think, why can they live above boiling? Because then the habitat they live in, if it's a hot spring or something, isn't it just boiling and the steam is evaporating away? These are often restricted to the undersea vents where even though the water might be above boiling temperature, um, the pressure, the intense pressure of being that deep underwater, the weight of the water pushing down, it prevents the water from, from boiling and turning into steam and evaporating away. So these, again, the thermophiles and hyperthermophiles, they do exist out in nature, but they're in isolated environments. 
The mesophiles, as far as human disease, this is the group we're concerned about. These are the ones, they can survive a little bit warmer than the human body, cooler than the human body. These are the ones that we would find most of the time out in nature, living inside or on organisms or out in the soil. Um, when it's really cold, they either die, sometimes they can go dormant, um, but again, they have quite a, a wide temperature range. They, they're still surviving here, they're just not actively growing very quickly. So they'd be kind of like sleepy bacteria at these temperatures. But, uh, you know, at their optimum temperature, warm-blooded mammal temperature, they're growing pretty quickly. So how does this apply to, um, you know, human health and health professions? In this middle zone, um, we have temperatures in Fahrenheit and in Celsius. You can kind of see the two scales. This is known as the danger zone. And again, our body heat is right in the middle of that. This is where we have the, have the most rapid growth of those bacteria. So things that we use to control their growth, if we heat things up, um, like boiling or cooking things, it brings it up into this temperature where you have very slow growth or destruction of their growth. Um, refrigerator temperatures are here. They're going to be just above zero. That um, certain of them can grow very slowly, but it kills off or stops the growth of, of many of them. And down here, this would be freezers. They'd be below, below zero freezing point. Um, that either kills them completely or just stops them, stops them from growing. So when you have leftovers and you clean them up and put them away, you should put them in the fridge or freezer right after you're done eating, not leave them out at room temperatures in this danger zone where you're going to have bacteria keep growing. You should also put them away in small containers. If you put away a whole big giant bowl of leftovers that's hot in the fridge at one time, then it takes a long time for the temperature to cool down and reach all the way into the middle. This is actual research that was done measuring how fast things cool down. So this is a big bowl of rice <clears throat> and it starts out, you know, after it comes off the stove, it's just done boiling, you stick it in the, you maybe serve some for dinner and then you stick it in the fridge. If you stick it in one big container, um, it cools down very, very slowly. It takes a long time for those cool temperatures to get to the middle. Even eight hours later, you're still in that, um, that danger zone, that kind of um, intense bacterial growth stage. However, if you separate your leftovers into small containers, then um, they cool down very quickly in the fridge, and after less than two hours, they're down out of that danger zone in the cool temperatures that stop bacteria from growing. So the just putting it in the fridge doesn't stop the bacterial growth. It has to have time to actually cool down to that temperature. So the smaller container you can put in the fridge at a time, the faster it will cool down and stop, stop bacterial growth. This, even though it's sitting in the fridge for a few hours, this could still grow bacteria that could potentially be producing toxins or be harmful and cause food poisoning, whereas the smaller container would stop those bacteria from growing and would not be able to um, grow enough bacteria to make somebody sick. <clears throat> Second requirement is pH. Now temperature and pH, if you think back and remember, those are also things that affected um, enzyme activity. So the reason temperature and pH affect bacterial growth is because they're affecting their enzymes. So if you get something at the wrong pH, the enzymes fall apart. The cell can't do any kind of chemical reactions or metabolism, the cell dies. Most bacteria grow well around neutral temper uh, temperatures, neutral pH. Um, the mold and yeast, the fungi, those can grow a little bit more acidic. Remember, a lower number means more acidity. There are even species of bacteria and archaea that are acidophiles where they are adapted. Their enzymes are designed to work with um, a very acidic pH, and they actually require an acidic environment in order to grow. I have coffee here because it's slightly acidic. Um, it's... Um, a lower, lower pH, which means higher acidity, 
And so there's not much microbial growth um, in a coffee cup. Okay, the last one I wanted to talk about for physical requirements is osmotic pressure. This means um, osmosis is the movement of water. So this is the movement of water and things dissolved in the water and how that affects the cell. Bacteria, they have a cell wall. So if they're in an environment where it's like pure water around them, bacteria would have salts and sugars and enzymes and nutrients inside. So the water would try to rush in, but they have a cell wall. So it protects them from just bursting open. However, if you put them in salt water where there are lots of salts outside, the water can still rush out through their plasma membrane. This is called plasmolysis. So putting something in some kind of a solution with a high salt or some other chemical around them will make the water come out of the cell and will kill off um, that bacteria inside. The inside just shrivels up, chemical reactions can't happen, the cytoplasm of the cell just dehydrates it, it disintegrates inside, um, and that can kill it off. However, the cool thing about microbes is they can adapt to lots of things. There are actually a group called the halophiles of archaea. They can tolerate high salt concentrations. Some of them actually require high salt concentrations in order to live. And they have a system of proteins that will pump salts out or pump waters in, uh, extra water in to balance the concentration and keep water in the cell. And if you take them out of that high salt environment, then they die. So they're always really cool exceptions to these rules um, as far as the microbes go. Okay, that's it for the physical requirements, temperature, pH, and osmotic pressure.